Welcome to the Day One Podcast. I'm Adam Daly. And I'm Brett Nord. We're back for another week to talk to you about some exciting updates coming down the pipeline. Unbelievably exciting. And we also have a guest live on our show. Usually we do these discussions that you've had sure. with people. Yes. And, and they're live too. Th- they are live a- at the alive. time. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yes. It would be fun to <laughs> interview the dad. And the, Sorry. But most of the time they're recorded episodes that you do with people, little conversations, and then we put them into the episode and it's great. But today we have a live person joining us on the show through Zoom. Welcome Pete Pete from from Portland. Portland. I don't know what I did to, uh, for this rare honor, gents, but I'm, I'm thrilled to be joining you here. We are too. You you said something, right? It was a magic password or something. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's going to be fun. I love some of your use cases. So we're going to talk about that. Yeah. We're we're going to talk about his use in, in uh, day one and, and just go from there. But we want to first talk to you about some updates, which we're very excited to share. Uh, I know this is okay. So I've been with day one since April, 2016. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that probably our most requested feature in day one is handwriting support with Apple pencil. Right. Well, listeners, (laughs) it's coming. It's coming very soon. Yes. I, I, now, I, I don't, I want, I'm not going to say a date or anything sure. like that or an ETA. Sure. But I want to tell you. December 12th. That we are. Just kidding. <laughs> I just said a date. It had nothing to do with that. I just That's true. That we're not, okay. It's non-binding. Non-binding. Um, but right now, Apple Pencil support is in an internal beta. We are, we are testing this out and experimenting with mm. the possibilities mm. of Apple Pencil support. If you could and, see Pete right now, he's covering his mouth. He's about to scream <laughs> something. I can't, you guys, I can't even. I can't even. It's going to be now, fun. Uh, My number one request since I started using the Apple Pencil. This is the first app that I opened with my iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, and I felt like this hat, this, please tell me. <laughs> Here's where it needs to go. Somebody <laughs> sees this like I do. Yeah. Now, we're not going to get into it right now, but when we get into the discussion with Pete, I want to yes. talk about what you envision or how you see yourself using Apple Pencil with, sure. with, uh, with Day One, because I think there's a lot of different use cases for it. Of course. And we have spent some time, uh, Ryan, one of our customer service reps, mm-hmm. has been gathering data from people who have requested it, mm-hmm. kind of getting down to the minutia, the specifics of what do you want to see with right. it? Right. How do you see yourself using it in Day One? So. This is the first iteration, I'll tell you that much, mm. and uh, but it's working That's in our internal beta. Exciting. We expect it, I would assume, to be going into public beta in the next week or two, maybe. Yes. I don't hold me to that. You know, hold thing, me to it. Things, hold Brett to it, but things change. Yes. I just want to say that uh, th- th- we're, we're working on it. Yeah. And that's exciting. Mm-hmm. I know that's going to be a huge, mm-hmm. huge win for day mm-hmm. one. So mm-hmm. thanks for your patience, everyone. Yes. I think we finally found a place. And the Apple Pencil, the new one is great. Have you tried the new one? Pete? You guys are just showing off now, right? No, 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 no. Is that, <laughs> we're, that what we're doing? Because I'm looking at the video. You both have the new. I can't. No, I don't so, have the new one. Okay. Now, I, I, that's a whole other story. Like, I could go into, like, <laughs> me begging my wife to let me buy this thing. The use case. And... I wasn't going to get the pencil. You can ask anybody in the sure. office. I oh, was I like remember. Adam, and I'm like, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't need it. I said that about the iPad. We too, called you but... Adam Adamant <laughs> there for a while because you were adamant about I it. I was. You're not going to get one. But then when the first like iteration of Apple Pencil support in day one came, I was like, uh, honey, yeah. I, I need it for work. I kind of need this for it's work. It's for work. And then she's like, we'll make work buy it for you. <laughs> Now I get her Adam, point. Adam, I'm super sure. curious. I have to ask: yes. I, is is the enthusiasm about the new iPad Pro and the new Apple Pencil? Did that drive any enthusiasm on the development side? Did that get people more excited about moving this up the? Because I know this, having listened to the podcast since the beginning, sure. I know that we've been talking about mm-hmm. this. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to speculate and say yes, for sure, because there were a number of engineers in the office that got it. And started playing with playing with it. In fact, one of our uh, iOS engineers got himself the Pro 11 inch, mm-hmm. and the pencil, and figured there's got to be a way we can do this. I think uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure Paul did too. Paul got a new one, right? Yep. He got the iPad. Yep. It was it was an interesting like unboxing four different iPads on the same day, but <laughs> yeah, the different sizes. Different, yeah, I'll just say I don't know if that was the catalyst, but I am I wouldn't be surprised. Right. If, that, if that helps. Yeah, uh, I figured. Because there is, I mean, the full screen now, the new things you can do with the pencil. Like I love that on like notes Erase. where you can tap to change the the settings between eraser and the writing u- yeah. Uh, yeah. utensil. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Anyway. Definitely helped to move it. Move it's it great. It's great. Um, yeah, that figures. So, yeah. Pencil support, you guys. Yeah. Get ready. 
there's something about handwriting, you know, and I'll just say that briefly. There's something about handwriting, seeing my own handwriting in there. Typing is way faster, but mm -hmm. you know, it, this is me. Like you can see kind of my personality yes. come out in how I write my letters and stuff. Sure. So, uh, anyway, the other thing that came out on, uh, black Friday, mm -hmm. which is a kind of sales holiday, I guess. Everyone knows what black <laughs> Friday is. Yeah. Maybe some of our international sure. listeners don't, um, sure. but maybe they do because they watch yeah. Americans on YouTube fighting over TVs on Black Friday. Anyway, uh, we launched gifts for day one. So now mm -hmm. you can buy a gift and send it to someone mm -hmm. for using day one for a year. So it includes all the premium features. It's $25. You That's get a cool. little PDF gift certificate that you can forward to someone that you want uh, to have try it out. Mm -hmm. So Not to be confused with gift without the T that you could right, upload gifts. as a photo. Gifts. In your entry. Yes. Gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have it's to just I, animated gifts of I, people I, journaling. <laughs> That's all you <laughs> over and over. That yeah. would be hilarious. Uh -huh. Now you can just send gifts to other people. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give animated it costs, it costs twenty five dollars, but <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give animated gifts as gifts. There you do. Year. You should gifts. I, I once printed out a, a birthday card full of memes for my sister and it was like the hit of her birthday. Love so it. it was personal. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Um, but anyway, it's a really cool feature. If you want to share day one with other people, you can go to day, uh, sorry, day one dot app slash gifts, G I F T S mm -hmm. and uh, purchase one. It'll be sent to your email so that you can later send it to someone else as a gift. So yeah, nice. very cool. Mm -hmm. The uh, last one I wanted to mention is another big feature request that we've had is video support mm -hmm. um and uh it is let me just tell you this i don't have an eta mm -hmm. but we are working on video yeah and it's going to be released when it's solid when it's solid yeah so the, the team cares about that yeah. you know the team wants to do their best right. on on these features so it'll be ready when it is mm -hmm. but i just figured it'd be a nice little teaser for you yeah. that uh, it's being actively developed yes. which i think is great i do a lot of video you mm -hmm. know home video stuff and having that in sure. my journal would be great sure so yeah that's all the updates i have yeah. mac uh 3.0 is still pending mm -hmm. um there's some redesign coming for mac 3.0 mm -hmm. it'll have audio recording support as it does on ios right now and apple watch Ooh, new apple watch stuff is coming down the pipeline too so really tell us about well it. just uh just uh the interface is changing up a little bit, so nothing major, mm -hmm. um, but you know, just keep an eye out for that. I have updated the help, ga help guides yes, at uh, help.dayoneapp.com. Mm -hmm. Search for watch, mm -hmm. and you can see what that will look like. So, yeah. Awesome. Those are our updates. Good stuff. And Android stuff. I'm going to tell you right now. It's, uh, there are discussions going on about what's going on with Android and what we can do to improve that experience, so stay tuned. We're working on it. Yeah. So the team, you know, I, I don't know if like all of our, maybe our listeners know, but maybe the whole world doesn't know all of our users just like, we have a very small team, right? Like sometimes you look at developers, uh, nobody's know. over four foot tall. Yeah, that's exactly right. Very We're small. all very short, like hobbits. Yes. We've got a bunch of hobbits working at day one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I distracted you. A small team in numbers. This is what, this is how it's going to be today, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. It's one of those days. He's for got me. sugar in Excited. his latte. Yeah. <laughs> It's just fun to be here. It's great it's pencil support. Uh, yes. No, I, I was just saying, like, this is, we are a small group, you know, right. and uh, work as hard as we can on what we can as quickly as we can. So sure. stay tuned. That's Thank right. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. Suggestions. Yeah. Hope you've had a great year so far. I hope a lot of that has been documented mm -hmm. in your day mm -hmm. one journal. Mm -hmm. So that's what this, that, you know, that's what we're here yeah. for. So. I keep thinking back to our discussion with Kendra Wright. You remember how she talked about the end of the year? She went to a New Year's Eve party yep. and tried to sum her year and was like, ah, it's unfulfilled. Right. She said, never again will I do that. And I keep referring back to that. I'm going to do that before the end of the year. Good. Have a fulfilled and then cue it up for next year. Do it. Do it. Be more mindful. And we'll talk about the book club, but I love the book. That's helped me so much to remember to be gratitude. Yeah. So the book. Grateful. The book is amazing. So yeah. why don't we'll we uh, jump right into that? Let's do it. Let's jump in with the book club that we've been doing on uh, Facebook, the Facebook Day One community. We're going to have a discussion on the 14th. So we're f recording this on a Friday, so two weeks from today, uh, uh, December 14th. We'll be having that discussion, Facebook Live and Zoom. Facebook Live and Zoom. We want to make right. sure that that's uh, available to everyone because I know not everyone is on Facebook, and we've had right. requests yes. on Twitter and Instagram saying, how can I be a part of this 
Sure. We're going to have, we'll post a, a link to the Zoom conversation that you can join in. Yes. You can listen passively. Right. You can use audio or video. Mm -hmm. And you can also participate if you want through comments or, you know, you know, raise your hand or whatever. But uh, right. hopefully we'll have a great group and yes. talk about this amazing book. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Enjoyed it so much. Um, as I promised, I will update, update my notes this week or my highlights from from reading the book. So if you're in a time crunch with the holidays, don't have time to read the whole book, although I do recommend you do that. Well, it, um, I'll have the notes. Two weeks, though. This right. It's an easy read. It's it 200 pages on iPad. So right. you could get it done yes. in two weeks. Right. I know some people who read a lot of books. This, sure. this one be, would be an easy read. So. Yes, yes. Jump in if you haven't yet. It's called The Gratitude Diaries by Janice Kaplan. Mm-hmm. That's right. And uh, yeah, Paul mentioned he's listened to the audiobook, so it's on Audible. Oh, nice. He's enjoyed listening to that. So there's some great stories. You know, it's not all just tips on what to do. It's actually weaved really well with, with stories. Well, and yeah, and it's backed up with uh, you know some pretty research, and good research. Yeah. In, in addition to the anecdotal evidence. Yes. So, at, plus, mm -hmm. in my experience, mm -hmm. just try it. Try out right. the things she, that she did. Yes. And I promise you, you'll you'll notice a difference because I did. Yep. That's right. So. Money back guarantee. Adam just gave it to us. That's right. Good stuff. So remember that date, the 14th. Yeah. Link below and then, uh, or, you know, we'll post the date and everything. So stay tuned. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. That's all I got for updates. Let's uh, spend some time with Pete from Portland. Yeah, Pete. You still there? Yes. Hello from Portland. <laughs> all right. Greetings. Pete, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're super active with podcasts. And I'm pretty I've, active with podcasts. Yeah. Almost uh, daily. I have been... Oh, w definitely daily. I, uh, I, I think I, we produce, uh, probably six shows a week, wow. uh, across the various podcasts that I do. I've been podcasting since 2006 and, mm. um, uh, you know, I, I do this professionally. So, you know, my little network, my, my modest little network is rashpixel.fm. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, within there, I have a number of sub shows, the, uh, bigger shows. The next reel is our, our movie podcast. That's been, um, you know, we just hit episode 500 of that wow. last, nice. maybe last week, this week, uh, with, with our conversation on the, the Thomas crown affair, mm. uh, 1967's, uh, original. Oh, Steve the old Queen. school, nice. the old school. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Not, we, we've not spent the, Pierce the whole Brosnan year. One. Well, we actually did that too. Okay. We, we okay. actually, we, this is part of our series of movies and their remakes. Uh, oh, okay. Nice. Uh, and, and our whole master arc, which is so fantastic for movie nerds. It's fantastic, right? We're, we're celebrating 50th anniversary movies. So we've spent the last six months. Uh, all of our little series have started with movies that were, that are celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. So, you know, 2001 and, uh, it's, it's great. Did so, you go see the IMAX version that they came out with then? I'm going to say something controversial. Uh oh. Uh oh. You, yeah. I'm refused. not I, I'm not one of those. I'm not a Kubrickian fan <laughs> okay. of 2001. Right. I'm what? a Clarkian fan. I prefer the books. The book, sure. Uh and that's uh so it's it's fair enough. It, it definitely uh is enough to incite comments. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you a quick funny thing that happened with the 2001 that Adam just mentioned? I yeah. did see it in IMAX, in IMAX and it was an awesome experience, but I'm in line to get my ticket. And I said something in reference because a bunch of, um, again, movie nerds with, like me, they're excited to see it, all queued up to get a ticket. And I get to the front and um, I said, yeah, I'm here to get 2001. She goes, oh, yeah, that movie, I don't know much about it. I said, well, it's a, it's a classic. It's an oldie but a goodie. And she goes, yeah, I understand it came out in 2001. <laughs> um, no, not quite. That didn't happen. <laughs> yes, oh, I promise. That's a good story. That's and the I worst. I turned to the guys like, really? And they're all like, please, like rolling their eyes. She really just said that? It came out oh, come on. She was 16, Brett. That's Leave true. her alone. She was. Okay. She was young. <laughs> I'll give it to her. But Wow. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, so that's a fun one. And, uh, and so we do that. I also do, you know, I do another, uh, a, a number of other podcasts, the ADHD podcast, taking control of the ADHD podcasts. And, mm. and, uh, we talk about day one all the time over there, cool. uh, you know, keeping it relevant. Um, uh, Great. so I've got, I've got a bunch of podcasts and, um, uh, we, so I produce weekly. I've got, you know, 2500 podcasts on the, on the site now. And, oh, man. and, um, see, that's my goal, Brett. That's my goal. I need to talk to Pete offline do. here and just like yes. get some career advice. No, yeah. I'm a I'm a podcast lover, man. So I do that. That's part of the job. The other part is uh, photography and consulting, mm. uh, marketing, branding, consulting. My background was in, uh, you know, in business. I worked for. I, I quit the big corporate job in 2007 um, nice. because I I wanted to push buttons. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to actually do the work, <laughs> and I I spent too much time hiring people to do the work. You know, that that is that sort of feeling. I just yep. I miss being behind the camera and uh, behind, so on the mic. You're talking literally pressing buttons, not making people upset. 
no, no, I literally yeah, yeah. press buttons, and sometimes I make them upset. But those two <laughs> yeah. things may or may not be related. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cool. I definitely want to hear about your personal use, but since we're talking about your business and professional, tell us how you use day one in business with your jobs. Uh, well, so, you know, we talked about the, the podcast stuff. Uh, that's mm -hmm. kind of the first big category. I, I start all my show notes in day one, and, and all of my research goes into day one. And so, you know, I end up with 3,000 some odd entries in the podcast journal that, that represent the show notes, uh, all tagged with, with the shows, and nice. I can jump around through them and Mm. and see them on the dates that they're in. And I can go back and I link, mm. I, I put the direct link to each episode back in the note cool. uh, so that I can jump to it on, on the website and see where the master file is stored. And it's just fantastic, uh, mm. just way for me to kind of interact with the, the content before it goes live and yeah. then maintain the archive after. So uh, that works really well for me. Preference on platform or device that you enter in your notes in? Uh, you know, I... Man, that that is a that. Speaking of controversial questions, that's minu I, that's minutia. But I was interested because I was just thinking about this because yeah. I do the same thing for my personal podcast as well. Yeah, is I do yeah. my notes on day one, and then I've got my reference there sure. as I'm recording live. So, well, I'll tell you because I'm doing so much podcasting, uh, I spend most of my time, you know, on the computer, right? Okay. And so I'm on my Mac more often. Uh, but I'll tell you if. I do, I love iOS and mm -hmm. I have, you know, I have the canopy and the Bluetooth and I have, I got this, this little stand, Oh, nice! you oh. know, the, the Viozon yeah. kind of stand. And so it yes. sets up and it turns, it spins so I can work portrait. And I oh, really yeah. love, mm -hmm. love this stand. And uh, so I spend more time, I, I'm aggressive about moving away from the Mac uh, mm -hmm. in, in just day to day. Like if there's something that can be done even for 15 minutes, away from the Mac, out of the office, I will, I'll go sit in the kitchen table, I'll sit in the back porch, I'll just, I'll yeah. get away from the Mac to do it. Sure. So my, my preference is, uh, you know, I'll definitely spin up iOS uh, day one, but generally it, it starts on, on the Mac because that's where I am. Yeah. So the, the reason I ask is because I, I find myself doing a lot more split screen with a web browser in day one so that I can be researching stuff or get quotes or images or whatever, yeah. and I can just drag those right in on split. the iPad. So split mm -hmm. view has been mm -hmm. amazing for my personal podcasting notes. So, well, and I would add to that, uh, you know, just capturing ideas. The Apple watch has been really oh, yeah. transformative. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it got really good in the last, I think it was the last update. Like it just got really good. The little notification that pops mm -hmm. up that says, Hey, we've just synced a, an audio. Like before that happened, there was always this sort of wizardry that I knew was going on in the background, but sometimes it wouldn't like I've, I've lost little oh. brief entries because I just wasn't clear where they went. Yeah. And that just all disappeared. Like yeah. I feel like after the last couple of weeks, I, I can really trust it. And, uh, um, so for me to start capturing on the watch while I'm driving, whatever, you know, I do the nose press thing, you know, I have it as a, it's a, <laughs> it's a complication and I just press it with my nose while yeah. I'm driving and, and I capture ideas that way. So. Nice. Well, yeah. yeah, no. And to, uh, to the engineer's credit, there was a lot of backend stuff that was done, you know, along with the notifications, but now you can also, um, record when you're not connected so you record an audio when you're not connected to your phone yes and i thought this was a big deal because we've had some requests come in what if i'm out on a walk and i don't have my phone but i've got my watch sure i want to record this audio mm -hmm. and then when i get back have it sync mm -hmm. that now works yes. so that was an exciting implementation how, as well how That's does great. that work over cellular like if i don't have my watch i'm on cellular. does it sync over cellular it does somehow? not no it doesn't good Just okay store so it. store it until you get back yeah okay. so it stores it locally That's good. on That's the watch actually what i would prefer okay. yeah just a side note, since we're mentioning transcription and audio, Dave Sparks, who's a friend of the friend of the show, mm -hmm. and day one um, Mac Power user, you yep. know Mac Sparky, great guy. He he emailed me this week and said it's probably obvious to the rest of the group, those of the the those that we've talked to in in tech, uh, but I can't emphasize how much of a game changer audio notes and transcription is for me. I'm creating more and better entries than ever before. Nice. It's like it just works really well. So. Do you use transcription as well with the audio recording? I do. Okay. I do both. Yeah. Depends on what I'm trying to do. If I'm creating a note for a show note, I use transcription. Okay. Uh, if it's a personal thing, if I'm just kind of recording thoughts and I need to talk a little bit longer, I'll, I'll just leave transcription. I'll go with a straight recording. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So, yeah. I've just, I've been curious kind of like what the balance is there, mm -hmm. what people are actually using is transcription kind of preferred or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, and that was also increased to five minutes. 
oh, by the way. Yes. Transcription for five minutes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, good stuff. it's really smart. It's just I just I, I get giddy when those kinds of features come out because those <laughs> those directly like hit right in the sweet spot of my use case. Awesome. And yes. I feel like day one more than just about any other app, maybe Ulysses, uh, more are in this class of apps where, I don't know, I feel like I'm in this upgrade cycle where every single upgrade addresses something mm. that I have complained about oh. or wish mm-hmm. for. Well, and that's I, good. So it's just, I get really excited whenever I see, a, see an update. Yeah, that's I, fantastic. I get si- excited about it. You know, I don't do drugs. I don't gamble. <laughs> but my God, man, these these app updates. <laughs> that's the high he it's needs. Euphoria, yeah. That's the Keep them right. coming. Keep them coming. That's right. <laughs> I noticed, I think it's Riedel, the developer that does a lot of Mac and iOS apps. They've started, I think it's Riedel. Yeah, they've just gone to where when they get enough feature requests from a user, they actually name the update after the user. Oh. It's kind of cute. I didn't know that. Oh, cool. that's right. Didn't they do the for Spark or something? There was the like the yeah. Brad Tarantino yes, version right. edition or something. It's really, it's really cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we both use the word cute because it is kind of more cute than... We did. I, how is that weird? It, it, it's an or homage. How cute become it's an a homage. Thing <laughs> yeah. It's an homage. I like it. <laughs> right. So, Pete, uh, tell us about your. Are you ready to move on? Yeah. Let's talk. I'm a following bit. you. Thanks. So, yep. scary. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. No. Let's do it. Tell us about your personal use with journaling. As far as have you always been a journaler? Is this kind of a newer thing with now with using tech to record things? I have. I I have been a journaler in in some capacity uh, okay. as as long as I can remember. But I'm mm-hmm. not one of those people that has journaled every day for, you know, sure. 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do, you know, I have my, uh, I have just a, a whole bunch of old sticker covered mm-hmm. moleskine journals that, mm-hmm. you know, I use for notes and thoughts. I have them kind of lining the, the closet shelf here. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I feel like day one, you know, was, I started with Mac journal in terms yep. of journaling on sure. the, the Mac uh-huh. and it, it didn't stick. Mm-hmm. It didn't stick when it felt like they they stopped updating for you know long periods of time. Yeah. And so I it just sort of evaporated. I exported all those, and um, it's really with day one where it's become a part of my personal and professional workflow um, mm-hmm. that I went so far as to create daily reminders. So now I have a daily review at four o'clock every day where I sit down in day one. I mean every day, Great. and just write down some thoughts that I need need to take care of. I have the weekly review Sundays at four, Mm. uh, where I sit down and and kind of look at the week past major highlights and plan for major projects coming up the next week, you know, thoughts, big happenings. Then I have a monthly review where I kind of review the whole month and look at the month ahead and record my thoughts and and notes and major objectives, personal and professional in in that note. So I can go back and and look at, you know, how have I, how have I done over the last six months? You know, Mm -hmm. it's coming up on the new year and uh, you know, I'm not much of a resolutions guy, but I do use the new year sort of momentum, you know, that kind of oh, emotional, yeah. cultural sure. momentum. I yep. use that to kind of yes. really dig deep and reflect yeah. a little bit more on what did I accomplish and what do I want to accomplish for the year to come? Um, I've started three of my novels in day one. Uh, yeah. And mm-hmm. yes, they're all unpublished. Uh, hey, but you can but, do book printing and then, uh, you know, pay 30, it, 30 bucks right, for there it. There you go. Oh. Uh, these are all NaNoWriMo. Uh, we're NaNoWriMo. I've done NaNoWriMo for, you know, 15 years. Cool. And uh, I'm a big fan of that. And mm. uh, so all of that started in, in day one. And and uh, mm. so it, it's really exciting for me to see, again, so much of my sort of creative life spins out of, of this, you know, modest little app that's just mm-hmm. a workhorse. How How long did it take you to kind of get into that routine, though? Was I mean, obviously, that probably wasn't like day one. You or sorry. The... <laughs> Good run. Ding! I like it. You know, where's the where's the <laughs> rim shot? I there. need a cowbell. I need so a rim bad. shot. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but but how long did it take you to kind of get into that routine and kind of figure out what works best for you? It it doesn't. I'm one of those. So I I live with uh, ADHD, and mm-hmm. I am one of those people whose nature of ADHD, like I, the dopamine push that I get with my particular brand of ADHD is all in systems and processes. So I'll go dark for a week where I will be running my to-do system in Todoist and things and OmniFo, and I'll keep hundreds of tasks (laughs) synced up in all of those apps so I can feel which one's the right one for me. Mm -hmm. But that level of hyper-focus allows me to ramp up pretty quickly. Okay, Uh, Mm -hmm. it, It ends up being kind of a dark week, 
because I don't talk to people. I'll just do one thing, you know, for, for the week. So for me, it was put day one in the dock, make sure it launches when I turn on my computer in the morning and opens up and get all the, the alerts set up just how I want them. And then I just kind of go with it. Okay. Like, as, if there's not a competing app in the space uh, with which I feel like I need to really compare, uh, it's I'm I'm off to the races. So for okay. me, it was pretty quickly. Once I made the made the decision, I, I was I was all in. You know, the photography too. You know, I create up a new I create a new journal uh, with every photo trip I take, and so I'm just nice. wrapping okay. up my my China trip right now. And so I've got hundreds of photos in there, and all the posts that go with them uh, through all the cities that that I visited and and all the trips we took. And then I take that's just an isolated sort of nugget of my life, then I can print the book and I can move on. And uh, so I do that uh, with with every major event uh, or trip. I, I definitely isolate it into, into those journals. Journal. And that, again, has just became, become a part of my workflow. Mm. Uh, it's been cool. just a delightful uh, way to do it. Awesome. Nice. Is there integration between day one and one of your to-dos? You mentioned like three or four there. Have you, do you Use one to do app now that you've to kind of determine what's I'm best. On, and... I'm on to doist now, okay. and mostly it's because they gamified it, you know, sure. with the, the karma. Are you are yes. you up with the karma? Yep. Oh, okay, I'm a junkie mm. for karma. <laughs> I just I I just hit twenty it, nobody understands this. It's that north right. it's Michael. that northwestern kind of thing. That's yeah. yeah. <sighs> See and I love it up there. Oh, I I suffer through my stereotypes. I, I did. <laughs> I got I hit twenty thousand <laughs> Really, twenty. People 000? get all upset. They're like, "You you, you don't watch Portland yet? No, because that's Monday. Yeah. you know what yeah. I mean. That's like, yeah. it's that's not funny. funny. It's uh, of course, of course, the free range chicken has a name. What? It's one of my favorite. That's not. Right there. Oh my god. So yeah. anyway, twenty thousand. You're gonna say entries. My karma points. Karma I just points. crested twenty thousand, so I'm now like a master level, whatever mm. to do checker offer, mm -hmm. and wow. that's that has sent me of course that sent me over the moon and i try to tell my wife look look at what i've achieved oh, and man. she's like yeah where's the you know yeah. where are the checks that's like right. that's assign that to, tell me about billable hours and then we'll then we'll talk <laughs> you know there's something about gamification though that i think helps people i mean obviously in this case um and it has come up a few times when we've discussed you know what can we do streaks. to to maintain engagement in day one streaks and stuff like that mm -hmm. that's definitely something that's been considered yeah. so oh yeah there's something what? about it. Yeah. Watch know? out. Badges, Watch themes. out for day one karma. Yes. Right? I I, hey, <laughs> so, I'm already all in. I will, I, you know. So back to my I'll, question. I will come it, to Utah and journal on site yes, to celebrate. Yes. We got to see it. Uh, I, uh, integration so, between the two. Do you Yeah, integration. So, yeah, I'll send. I, I use uh, the uh, all of the appropriate, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are they called? The little widgety things. What do you call them? The... The extensions, oh, the, not share, extensions. the share yeah. extension. Share, share, yeah, share. Yeah, share yeah. Things, yeah. Um, I do that. I do it most with uh, ScanBot, actually, okay. yeah. and um, in addition to Apple Pencil, handwriting support is my number one giant request for day one. <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one was support for PDFs mm -hmm. uh, because that's mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and honestly, I don't know if I even want to talk about that because what I do right now is I do scan by usually I, you know, if it's something I'm keeping like a bill or something, I send it into Evernote as a PDF. Yeah. Um, and, but sometimes it's, you know, my kids got a great letter from school yeah, and I sure. want to keep that and tell a story about it. And so I want to save it as a PDF into day one. Mm -hmm. Right now, my workflow is simply share it as JPEG. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I think my preference would be PDF. The downside of that for me is that really changes day one, and it, it now puts it into competition with something like Evernote, right. which is kind of my master library. And I'm I'm not really keen on that either. I don't I don't want my systems to compete. Yes. Right now, I have a use mm -hmm. for or each of them. There, there's a tri there's a tricky space, obviously between okay, what is your main purpose as an app, right? Right. Do I want to be the best journaling app, or do I want to be a more utility app like Evernote, where I can just kind of put all sorts of documents and content in there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that the team is, is conscious of. They're, they want to be the best journaling app. Because I know one of our big features in version one was the publish feature. Mm -hmm. Some of you may remember this where you could select an entry, publish it to an online link and share that link with other people. And then people could kind of tune into your journal entries. And when moving to version two, that was, you know, kind of slated to be on the docket, but we kind of thought, okay, do we want to put all our research resources into this online publishing tool? Mm -hmm. 
or kind of focus more on what we want day one to be as in a journaling app, right? And so I think I'm not always involved in all of those discussions, but they try to consciously decide where do we want day one to go. And, And so some of those, you know, are on hold until we can figure out a solution that works best for us or, you know, whatever. Right. And I, a PDF is on that list. Like I, I, we get requests for that. So. Yeah. I, I honestly, like it's, it's a request that's in my head and I kind of like, I would be okay if you never listened to that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sorry. What? What are you saying? <laughs> well, the other, th- the other thing is I, I heard this from another app. We watched this video where when, when users make requests, try to identify the problem they're trying to solve by that request. And maybe we can address mm-hmm. it in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so right. that's also something that you know, I think the team tries to to rely on is not just, okay, here's this little band-aid fix for this one use case, but how can we look at what they're really asking for and then, and then try to implement that. So it's been eye opening for me kind of to go through this experience and work with the team to just see how, where that balance is, what Mm -hmm. decisions they make and then back them up a hundred percent. So, yep. And we'll continue to do the developer interviews. Yeah. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. So ahead, yeah, I, I am always curious about kind of the thinking that goes in that underlies the decisions to to cut things. I, I'm one of those people that poured one out for the publish mm-hmm. feature uh, when it was gone. But then I realized I never used it. Like yeah. it didn't fit with my core mm-hmm. intention of mm-hmm. of using the app in the workflows sure. that I created. I just I never used it for that. So, right. uh, you know, totally makes sense. And well, me- and, and you mentioned, you know, competing with other apps. There's a lot of great publishing services out there. Yeah, Medium. Yeah. Medium, like even the team uses Medium. Right. Like a lot of the engineers will use Medium for their posts yeah. and they Medium does it really well. Sure. And so do we want to try and compete right. with that? Right. Or do we want to, you know, stay in our own space and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Pete, do you remember your first entry in day one? Put you on the spot. Uh, do I remember my first entry? Do a quick search. He's going to look now. Talking. Yeah, look. well, I can't. Okay. I can't. This so, is an open book uh, test, Pete. The open beauty book. of it. How, when did, when did day one launch? Uh, oh, 2011. How about this? What was your last post? Is that easier to answer? Oh, today. today yeah. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> right. Right. That's easy. So it launched in 2011. Seriously? Yep. I'm trying to pull up. my. We can come back to you're, it. You're actively looking. Are we doing real time research right now? Well, I'm looking yeah. up the release notes. It was on Mac first, yeah. right? I I have a uh, I have a scan. It was not a scan. It was a note that I had because for a long time I had been done my handwritten journaling sure. in Good Notes. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, I had done it on with a one of the early early styluses that were now like nobody even yep. remembers, right? Just the little rubber tip kind of writing with the tip of your yeah. fist, like <laughs> basically <laughs> savages, savages. <laughs> I feel like I'm writing with a femur, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and uh, so that was that was it. And I would take those and I would export, save those as images, and send them into day one to okay. for safekeeping. And I definitely have one of those. And it was, uh, it, it's actually it was a note that I had written, a handwritten note of a report uh, of an experience we had with my kids with one of their doctors after an injury, and I was complaining about it. And that's mm. what it was. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just used it as a way to vent. And it's a full page of notes about me and my experience with my my child who had an injury and I there wasn't happy go. with the doctor. Wow. That was 2011. Yep. So it looks like Mac launched in March of 2011. All right. Day this one, was December. One, day this... one, 1. 1.0. Okay. I just looked up my first entry. Mm-hmm. You ready for this? It's going to be yeah. so disappointing. Uh-oh. This is January 25th, 2012. Oh, that's not bad. Entitled. Hello there. Okay. This is my attempt to write in my journal slash diary. I've never been good at this. So how's that for a start? <laughs> I don't want to burn. Okay, it gets better. I don't want to burn out. So here's my entry for today. Tomorrow I'll give more of what I'm doing <laughs> really? now. That's it. This th- okay. that's the quintessential like first entry I know. though. It is the quintessential is. first entry in any journal is. I'm not really good at this. Let's see how this yeah. goes. Yeah. And then I say that's in, fantastic. At, at the end I say tomorrow I'll give more of what I'm doing now. A snap a snapshot of my life in the 2012th year. My next entry is February 13th. No. So. I, I might make the next day. Hey, dang it! As as long as it's regular, right? As long as sure. it's consistent, you're doing it yes. once a month. Hey, that's yes. fine, right? right. I, that's always yes. been my. I've been an advocate of make journaling yes, your you own. Have. You right. define it for yourself. I love so. it. 
Thank you. I'm not going to get well, down on you. Good. You know, that's that's really the the nut of of the journaling process for me. And it's one of the reasons I talk about it so often on the ADHD podcast is because uh, so much of, of journaling, you know, is about the mindfulness or a mindfulness process, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's being able to step back mm -hmm. and be reflective and slow down. Mm -hmm. And and that's another one of the reasons I love the handwriting support so much. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you said it before, I think we pushed record, Adam, that, that I'm faster on my keyboard. Well, yes. I, yeah, absolutely. I, I write literally like I have all my fingers are broken. Like my handwriting is terrible, <laughs> but you know, it slows me down to the point that I have to think about every letter that comes yeah. out of the tip of the pencil. Love and, that. uh, when I'm in a space of hyper-focus, when I'm in a space of, uh, that, that kind of rigorous introversion, I have to slow my brain down by, mm -hmm. by just putting in a speed bump. And sometimes yeah. I, that, that speed bump is, you know, my hand. I like that. I that makes too. a lot of sense. It does. It does slow you down. It, 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 you know, I almost said there's like a price to pay having to manually yeah. write out your your uh, your notes. And mm -hmm. you're right. You know, you're, you're maybe more thoughtful about what you're putting in there as opposed right. to just opening up the floodgates. And I, I'm, I'm sure there's benefits to both. You know, uh, somebody actually commented on the Facebook community today about do you include sad I'm entries? Just looking for that. Do yeah. you include sad entries? And I said, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hide away from those moments. And plus, my my purpose for journaling was posterity, right? I want my kids to see this and my grandkids to know who grandpa was or whatever. And if, I, if I'm if i all highlights, 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 like they don't get to know the real yeah. me. That, that sometimes was, I had bad days. Yeah. You know? I, that was Giovanni Lopez. That thank you. That was a great question. Thank you, Giovanni. Yeah. Yeah. I You know, there's something about that. Like choosing not to include... Uh, you know, certain events or certain things that just made you feel a certain way or experiences that I, I kind of feel like that is unintentionally rewriting history, yes. future history. Yes. You know, uh, and uh, I think it, I mentioned that too in my response. I said, you, it, you know, you write history is written by the victors, right? And if that's, if, if I'm writing highlight after highlight, that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm rewriting, yeah. you know, as you said, yeah. I'm, I'm blocking out some of these events that maybe I learned something from, or sure. maybe I, you know, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't learn from that crappy experience yeah. and I was mad about it, but then I can look back and go, oh, that's how I handled it. Maybe I should try something different next time and then progress. Sure. And yeah. if you ever share that with your children, that's not really fair to only have positive things and be like, well, gosh, didn't dad experience this that yeah. I'm going through? Yes. Unless you are honest and... Yeah, no, and that's the other thing is maybe they go through something similar. Sure. They look back and see my journals. Oh, dad handled it like this. Maybe I should try that. Or right. maybe I should try the opposite. You know, definitely right. they should be better right. than me. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Yep, you said that. Be as authentic as possible in your post. Don't hide from the sad, negative stuff. It's good. I know that was a it's little, a that was effort, a little, right? a bit of a tangent there from slowing down, but I just thought that was uh, kind of correlated there. Yeah. Well, you know, slowing down and grounding us, right? I yeah. mean, it, it, it's it's a grounding experience too. Mm -hmm. It's a way to just kind of plant my feet and say, "This is my reality right now. I went through yeah. something hard, and I have now. I, I it's it's a way for me to adapt yes. to this mm -hmm. kind of whatever the 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 new normal is, even if it's just a little thing. You know, my son breaks his yeah. arm, yeah. Uh, and everything gets shaken up for a few days, and now I've got a kid who's in a cast for six weeks, and what does that mean for? you know, a, a child, how does that impact our family? Like there's a, mm. there's a new experience with that. And I want to capture mm. that and make mm -hmm. sure that I'm, I'm able to use that to adapt yeah. Yeah. Uh, from the littlest experiences to the, to the big ones, new jobs, you know, new marriages, relationships, whatever. Sure. Agreed. The human experience. All right. Here, here's a curveball. Ready? Mm -hmm. Favorite current feature in day one. Mm -hmm. uh, the watch. Okay. Hands down. Watch uh, out. Uh, now, see, here you've, you've, you've set me up because I'm already <laughs> so exuberant about everything, but I've already said it. Like, it's true. Uh, hands down. It's being able to use my nose yeah. on my wrist <laughs> and start talking. I, you, I no know support. he's not the only one because I've done that myself. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you, know, my, you know, my finger's too cold or I, you know, I'm, on the, wheel, I'm sure. on the steering wheel, just tap it with my nose. I, and I know there's other people out there that do it. That's I'm right. the odd man out. I've never done that. Come on, Brett. No, I haven't. Oh, it's like a Brett. it's like a eleventh finger, man. <laughs> it is the eleventh <laughs> finger feature. That's what it is. All right, I'm gonna try oh. it. This week I'm gonna try it. I'll do that. I I deeply hope that there is an eleventh finger feature in the show no, in the uh, release. Notes. Oh no, that's gonna be the title of this episode, my friend. <laughs> 
It's going to be named after Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Pete knows how to I... use his nose. Okay. Good stuff. You may think you're alone, but you're in good company. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. I would love to know if you have any shout outs to the community as far as tips, tricks. What would you tell our listeners that you've learned? Well, I, I don't know if it's necessarily a tip or a trick. I feel like I've, mm-hmm. I've, you know, my workflow I've already sort of outlined. Yes. Whether it's you know using the share sheets and sending J- JPEGs, things like that of, of events and mm-hmm. uh, watch stuff. Um, I, you know, I I went to see David Sedaris. Uh, if you're I did too. With David Sedaris, yeah. the, the writer. On, yeah, he's week. Yeah, he's on he's on a tour, so he was here, and then he mm-hmm. it sounds like he came to see you. Yes, uh, and he's wonderful. And he told uh, first of all, he told two fantastically uh, dirty jokes that uh, that I immediately documented in day <laughs> yes, one. Yes, yes. Uh, so we'll leave them there where they there belong, but yep. they're really delightful and mm-hmm. horrific. Yes. And uh, but you know what I noticed is you know as a storyteller, this was the second time I'd seen uh, mm. David uh, over two years, and I actually went back to the post in day one. Uh, uh-huh. Where I the first time I saw uh, David, and I noticed that my language had started to change in my personal mm-hmm. entries, mm-hmm. and uh, so I, oh, I go back to sit down after seeing him that second time and mm-hmm. look at at how my language mm-hmm. has changed and realize that you know I had uh, really evolved as a storyteller through those mm-hmm. two milestones in in telling my personal stories. I love that, and uh, I. I feel like that was the first time I noticed that even as somebody who sits down and writes novels intentionally, mm. I write fiction and, and the podcasts that I do tend to be practical and, and skills based, you know, we teach people things, but I don't think in my personal history in terms of, of stories, you know, mm. in terms of telling them like, like mm. a story and, and that experience of, of looking at the arc of my storytelling between those two years and look at how far I've come, uh, I, I would just say, you know, consider yourself a storyteller of your life. Like that's what you are. And uh, that's one of these things that this tool can really do, whether you use it like I do as a, as a you know, very much a professional tool sure. um, or you just use it as a diarist. Uh, you're a storyteller of your own mm-hmm. stories and, and, mm-hmm. Um, it's it, you may not end up on stage telling stories to a thousand people in a crap packed auditorium, but uh, one day somebody's going to read this, and and you know they're going to they're going to share in your story and your language, your use of words, your uh, your flourishes, your touches, your identity. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important. That's awesome. Uh, that was really powerful. Yeah, so, <laughs> that was fantastic. I agree. I, li- I listened to a podcast this week from Mel Robbins, who the three second rule, I think is her three, two, one, the countdown. And she's awesome. Good, great Ted talks. And a similar advice she would give. She said, I have a lot of people approach me about how do I make it on the speaking network and the circuit and how do I do that? And she keeps referring back to this. The one thing that you have that no one else has is your story. You know, you can get skill based right. and learn to be a better public speaker, but until you tell your story and that's something that no one else can offer. I had the same experience when I saw David Sedaris, and I met, I shared it with the team. Uh, the next, I saw it on Sunday. The next day morning, we had a Sunday, uh, Monday morning, we had a meeting, and BJ, our lead developer, shared a story, just a kind of a funny off the cuff, just saying, oh, "I went to the gym over the weekend, and I left my wallet, and I went back to get it, and it was in a safe, and they couldn't find the combination to the safe." <laughs> And we all just laugh. And I said, okay, I got to share what I, you know, I told what I went, where I went. I said, this guy stood up for hours and read from his journal, his entries. And he's got his latest book is about his journal entries. Next one's going to be about journals. And they seem to be kind of mundane stories, but yet he brings his personality into it. And they're hilarious. I'm like, we all have the stories like yep. that. But how often do we stop and write them down and notate them? It, it takes practice to mm. get over self-judgment oh, yeah. and self-loathing. Right. Yes. It, it's a muscle. It mm. is a muscle mm. that we are building and strengthening mm. and stretching. And, um, and and it takes repetition. Mm-hmm. And Agreed. that's OK. Agreed. Yes. Well, I think uh, I think we're about out of time here. I could say one more thing. Oh, please. To that point. Is, I just want to. <laughs> yeah, thanks. The idea of social media where, where those of us that post, I don't very much, but you'd kind of put it through the filter of is this interesting enough for people to hear is this going to be compelling you kind of have that filter we have to worry about it you don't have that with day one it's like just record it and it's only you that needs to yeah my you family know, can read it when i'm dead yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i i have i have seven or eight printed day one books over there and my yeah. wife came down one time and she's looking through and i'm like hey what, what are you doing 
What are you doing? Still here. Still here. I said, you can read those when I'm dead. (laughs) Now, I've picked on my wife a little bit, but let me just tell you, she is my best friend. So I, I, I give her a little... A little heat you know, I, I, I gotta, I gotta throw in. Uh, this was one of the tips that I shared on my podcast long, uh, some time ago, but specifically on that point because I, I am a, an ardent believer in it. Mm. Uh, that if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for a social media cleanse, right? You know, mm. if you, if you find you're spending too much time staring at the, at the black mirror, yes. um, day one is such a fantastic alternative. Uh, to the just sort of waiting in line, I need to fidget on something. Mm. So I, you know, it was several years ago, I was doing a, a cleanse and I, uh, I deleted Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and everything off of my phone. And I just put day one on there and said, you know, this is going to be my alternative. When I feel the need for the dopamine push to share something, I'm just going to type it in here and walk away. And so I'm waiting in line at the DMV. I'm mm. standing at the grocery store. I'll type one or two lines or I'll dictate a line or two uh, and uh, I'll move on. And that has been really transformative. I yep. still don't have, uh, you know, I got Instagram back. But I, don't, I don't even use it that often, but I still don't have Twitter and Facebook on my phone. I have day one. Yep. Yeah. If it's important enough to share, I'll share it later. Yep. I'm a, I 100% believe it. Preaching to the choir. I agree. Huge. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we could go on another hour. No, this too. has been absolutely delightful. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Pete, for being on the show with us today. Oh, absolutely my pleasure. And you know what? I was also told that I was allowed to give a shout out to the team. Can I Can I oh, still do that? Yeah, is of it course. Too late? Yes. No. Sure. Look, I, it is so, I know how strange it can be to sit in a, you know, a, and stare at a screen and create this tool and not mm. really know uh, how it's going to be received, how it's received day to day. Uh, but I just have to say uh, deep thanks because, and, and I hope that no one who is actively working on this tool ever underestimates, uh, you know, the power of the tool to change the way people live their lives. It has certainly changed how I interact with the world around me through thoughtful uh, processing and mm. So thank you for being an enabler in that journey. It's it's really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Pete. Pete. That was that was awesome. Yeah. We'll pass that on. <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. Um, I love how you say that you'll pass it on as as if nobody on the team listens to this podcast. I think they all do. They do. I think they all do. <laughs> yeah. I would yes. hope so. Yeah. Yes, they will. So. Yeah. They're all we, podcast junkies. Yeah. I think we all are. Like the entire team is a podcast. We're mm-hmm. all junkies. Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> anyway. In a good way. Um, sure. So, yeah, that's all we have today. Um, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for those features. We're very excited. We're very excited for what's coming down the line. And uh, if you ever need any help, we have help guides online. If you go to help.dayoneapp.com, mm-hmm. you can search through them. There's uh, different categories of troubleshooting, tips and, t- tips and tutorials, etc. If you need additional help, uh, you can chat with the support team. You can do that in a number of ways, including an in-app chat on iPhone, iPhone or iPad. Right. Uh, I, I was saying iPhone. That's, a, <laughs> that's just a conglomeration yeah. of I, sure. iPad and iPhone. Yes. Um, but if you go to dayoneapp.com slash contact, all of our support uh, avenues are there, plus our times that we are in the office. So right. if you need help, let us know. Yes. If you have feedback for Brett and I, Go to pod or email us at podcast at dayoneapp.com. That's right. And then you can still sign up for times to have a discussion with Brett because we love having those. And mm-hmm. as soon as we can, we'll try and put them on the show and integrate with what topics we're coming up with that week. So. That's right. Calendarly.com slash dayoneapp. Calendarly? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Maybe. Calendly. 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 Gosh, dang it. Yeah, I Calendly. Times. Thanks. Whatever it is. The I link... just do the calls. No, no, no. So I have a text expander snippet for yeah. the for the show notes, sure. and I just paste... So I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> Calendly. That's right. Yeah. Good. Anyway, the link below. Check it out. Yes, <laughs> That'll yes. make it easier. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for joining us. Oh. And after talking to Pete, we're going to consult with him to step up our game. We're going to get even better at this podcast. Oh, thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. For the best <laughs> tips and tricks. He's going to give us podcasting tips and tricks. Yes, Absolutely. That's right. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We will uh, talk to you in the next couple of weeks. Have a great couple of weeks. Yep. Take care.